Good morning, Library Adventurers, and welcome to this very special Library Adventures Live. Now, why is today so special? Because we're being joined by two wonderful guests, author and winner of the Roald Dahl Funny Prize, mm, this is going to be good, Peter Bentley, and the incredibly talented illustrator, Claire Powell. Is there anything else? Why is it special today? Ah, do you know? Of course, of course, of course. Just in case you haven't noticed all the flags and the horses on the telly, we're celebrating the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. 70 years, 70 years. I wonder what you will all be doing in 70 years' time. Can you imagine? Ah, but a better question is, and you can answer this later on if you like, what, which of your favourite books that you love to read do you think children will still be reading and enjoying in 70 years' time? Maybe be one of Peter's and Claire's, who knows? Have a little think. And if you want to join in, you can uh, pop your answers into the chat. Ask an adult that's with you to help you with that. And I'll share them later on. 70 years on, which books do you think they'll be loving? Right then. So let's meet Peter and Claire and find out more about their brilliant books. We've got great titles. Are you ready for these? The King's Birthday Suit and The Royal Leapfrog. You'll be able to ask questions during the show. Just pop them into the chat again and I'll share them on the screen and share them with the world. And if you want to have a go at drawing along with Claire, quick, 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 go find a piece of paper and a pencil so you're ready to do that a little bit, a little bit later. OK, so with a right royal flourish and lots of bows, let's meet Peter Bentley and Claire Powell. Hi, Hello. Claire. Hello. Hello. Lovely to have you on Library Adventures Live. Welcome to Kirklees. Welcome to Kirklees. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's nice to be here, there. Well, yeah, lovely to be here. Thank you. Yeah, Wonderful. and happy happy Jubilee Day to everybody. Um, I think it's officially today, isn't it? Yeah, today is the official Jubilee Day. Yeah. So yeah, the fun, the fun so. continues, let's hope. Brilliant, brilliant. So I'm going to hand over to you um, and uh, we're looking forward to this session this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Right, hello. Well, my name is Peter, and this no, this is Claire. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here. I'm over. Oh, it's all strange because it's mirrored. Back I don't know which cameras, camera. That's right. So I do yes, that. So I am here. Yeah. Hello, hello. <laughs> um, and we are here to celebrate the jubilee, as we said, and and to and to share with you um, a couple of the stories that we've been working on together with a royal theme. Um, and I think, Claire, you're busy working away on a third one with a royal theme. I am. Right? I am doing a third book uh, with a royal theme that I can't say too much about, um, other than I think it will be out next year. Um, I think in late May, early June, I think. And I'm yes. just doing the pencil sketches for it now. In fact, I was doing some yesterday. There's not much much rest for illustrators i have to say yeah <laughs> no well uh, uh, or for authors actually because i'm actually writing fourth one at the moment and i've given myself about six weeks to do it because yeah um, i just need to get it done yeah so we're, we're both on our own little deadlines That's how yeah we are <laughs> yeah in six weeks time we'll both be in yeah out of the deadline phase now these uh these stories that we're writing are they're inspired by the works of a very famous storyteller who lived a long time ago. And oh. uh, you might, yeah, you, and I think Claire's got a picture of him. There he is. <laughs> and his name is Hans Christian Andersen. There he is. Um, and I think if you want to try and guess how long ago he lived without looking it up, um, you, you can put it in the comments or, or, the, um, or the questions because it was quite a long time ago, wasn't it? And yeah, he wrote, sorry. yeah, and he wrote some very famous stories and we've made our own versions of them. And, and one of them is The Royal Leapfrog, which I'm going to read first. And then at the end, we're gonna have the King's birthday suit. Um, and in between, Claire is gonna show you how to draw one of the amazing characters from one of the books. I think it, well, I'll leave that, leave that to you, Claire, that you can. Yeah, would, in case I won't spoil the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I hope you're all sitting comfortably um, and uh, happy to uh, lend your ears to a story. Because um, I know you would all adore stories and, and perhaps you can share some of your other favourite stories with us as, 
as Kirsty said, while, while we're chatting. Um, so I think we'll just start with story number one, which is yes. the Royal Leapfrog. Okay. Now there's a nice picture of me and Claire smiling yeah. away. Move my jumper on, it was a chilly day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The Royal Leapfrog. A flea and a grasshopper could not agree who jumped the highest. I know, said the flea, we'll go to the palace. The king can decide. What a splendid idea, the grasshopper cried. Humans and I are close friends, thought the flea. Therefore, his majesty's bound to choose me. The grasshopper thought, I'm so stylishly dressed, his majesty's certain to say I'm the best. I think I'll come too, croaked a little green frog, who was sitting nearby on a rotten old log. Fine, said the grasshopper. Sure, said the flea, but you don't stand a chance. And the frog thought, we'll see. They came to the palace. The guard hollered, stop! But they jumped through his legs with a skip and a hop. The king said, good grief, what a bad-mannered bunch. I'm just in the middle of having my lunch. The flea and the grasshopper bowed and said, sire, we'd like you to tell us which one can hop higher. All right, sighed the monarch, but please make it snappy. If my custard goes cold, I'll be very unhappy. Right, look at this, said the confident flea, and she jumped in the air with a great cry of whee! They watched as she hurdled a fine chandelier and landed inside the old admiral's ear. It tickled so much that she leapt to her feet and knocked the Lord Chamberlain right off his seat. In the kerfuffle, the flea tumbled free. But where did she get to? Where could that flea be? She's gotten down my collar. She's just nipped my neck, the Chamberlain wailed, and it's itching like heck. He sent for a bucket of ice from the kitchen and stuck his whole head in to stop all the itching. Enough of the flea, cried the king, very vexed. Somebody catch her. It's Grasshopper next. Come along, said the princess. Get on with your hopping. I'm meeting a duchess at two to go shopping. Fine, said the insect. He did a great hop into her highness's custard. Kerplop. Oh, cried the princess, just look at this mess. You've ruined my very best bombazine dress. Then the grasshopper hopped once again with great ease and tipped up the pepper, which made them all sneeze. Uh, Tushel! The king's golden crown tumbled into his custard. The princess's nose ended up in the mustard. The admiral sneezed herself onto the floor. Achoo! And the chamberlain's wig skittered out of the door. Come here, cried a guard with a wave of his truncheon. I'll squish you for spoiling his majesty's luncheon. But the grasshopper hastily hopped himself home and decided to stay there and never more roam. Enough, the king grumbled. This contest is over. I need to lie down on my favourite sofa. <coughs> Excuse me, your majesty, <coughs> came a small croak. The frog, who'd been watching in silence, now spoke. The flea and the grasshopper had a turn, sire, but I'm certain that I can jump up even higher. Very well, said the monarch, but make any mess, and it's off to the dungeons with you, sir. Oh, yes. I won't make a mess, sire, the frog said. You'll see. Here goes. And he hopped on his majesty's knee. His majesty glared and declared with a sigh, You call that a jump? That's not very high. But sire, croaked the frog, I've jumped highest of all. For what sire is higher than you in this hall? The king made a frown. 
Then he roared with delight. Ho, ho, ho! What's higher than the king? Why, nothing. You're right. You clever old frog, I declare you the winner. Tonight you shall sit at my table for dinner. That evening the king said, I heard someone tell of a prince who was turned to a frog by a spell. Of course, said the princess, this frog is a prince. So she gave him a kiss with a bit of a wince. But the frog was a frog and forever would be, though frogs who can talk are dead cool, I agree. And as for the flea, she decided to stay on His Majesty's Poodle. She's there to this day. <coughs> the end. Yay! Yes, brilliant. Thank you. I love that. I love the illustrations as well. There's so much to see. So much to see. Yeah, they're wonderful, aren't they? Really yeah, are. Really, just, really. really. There's, there's so many little stories going on in the illustrations, apart from the main story that's just in the words, which is the sign of a great illustrator, if you ask me. Yeah. I'm blushing. Um, speaking of which, <laughs> now hand, yeah, I got it right. I'll now hand over to, no, no. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I suppose um, that is probably something that I always talk about, actually, with bookmaking, um, that as an illustrator, you're not just the, uh, sorry, one second, because my I just want to turn on a light that's just gone off and it's thrown me into darkness. That's better. Yeah. When you're making picture books, I think that's something that you have to consider. Um, it's a lot more than just kind of reflecting what the text is saying. I mean, you can do that. Um, but yeah. if you want to add extra elements and extra stories in, like Peter said, I think that's where the fun comes in for the illustrator, but also I think for the reader, because it it's nice for them to then be able to return to the book and spot little things going on in the background. And I also think that kind of helps the story to come alive a bit, you know, because in real life, obviously things play out in our day to day all the time, but it's not just one thing going on, you know, like other things are going on in the background of your life. And I kind of feel that that's important to reflect that in the books as well um yeah. and so you know for something like royal leapfrog um i had to do a lot of research into um the time period that i wanted to set it in and we we talked about it as a team you know, that, yeah. with the publisher yeah. and we came up with the idea of um a sort of tudor medieval -y type setting slightly elizabethan i suppose and yeah. then i had to go off and research all of the costumes um and then the the kinds of homes that they might have lived in and what they might have looked in and the furniture and then i even researched um food um and kind of lots of different types of cakes and things like that for some of the big kind of <laughs> scenes so like yeah some of these foods would actually have been found in like Elizabethan times. Um, yeah, they, well they definitely had custard and mustard in Elizabethan times because I, I saw a did, program with, yeah. with Lisa Worsley on it at once. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and that was really, really fascinating for me to be able to kind of delve into those different worlds for yeah. each book that I work on and I think especially these, this series of books because they do have that royal theme they're a lot more um flamboyant than maybe some of the other books that i work on and it's a real opportunity to kind of um create everything you know um and that whole world it comes to life as i work on it and it's that's part of the fun really um yeah. i do yeah. love that bit um, well, that's, you know, it's, that's the, the joy for me of working with a, a, a great illustrator is that i say to when i go to schools and i, I say to children um well, I, I make I make half the story. I write the words, but I'm making half the story because if you're making a picture book, then you know the, the pictures are, are are the rest of it. They, an illustrator will add luster uh, yeah. <laughs> to a story, literally. Um, I think that's even what it means, isn't it? Illustrator, somebody who in the old days they would have somebody who would add little pictures to manuscripts. Um, yes, I suppose. Yeah. Um, so uh, it's a it's a great joy for me to work with somebody who is so good at drawing, you know, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> I 
can draw anything that they think of. I mean, I, I can sketch just just sort of, you know, give an, give an idea of this is what vaguely what this person looks like, but I can't, I can't illustrate. So that's Apart a real skill. Cars, mm. I find yeah. cars very difficult. I, I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't give you a car off the top of my head or yeah, a bicycle. But, but I've, I've bicycle. noted that, and that there won't be any cars in the next two books. So I, promise you <laughs> I, I like drawing cars, but I have to, I have to kind of have a lot of reference. In fact, it's funny you should say that because just on the floor here, I actually have a car manual, <laughs> which is wow. full of very, very nice cars. Um, but very, this is very nice cars. Gosh, that's amazing. Whenever I need to draw cars, I have to have a manual for how to do that because I'm really I, I, not. I've got, a, I've got a sneaking that's fondness funny. for cars. It's actually, I, I used to like drawing cars as a child. So there, there you go. Ah, I'll draw, well, I'll maybe draw you'll the cars. Be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you'll be pleased when you see my ideas for the next book then, Peter, because there may be a car or two in there. I don't oh, know. Really? I don't want oh, to say. Oh, okay. What's this case? <laughs> Brilliant. Okay. Looking forward to that. Yeah. yeah. Is it, um, a Bentley, is it a Bentley by any chance? Oh, it'd be perfect. <laughs> maybe, maybe, who knows? Um, yes. Uh, so, yeah, cars is something that I need a bit of help with, along with bicycles. And um, I've slowly got better at drawing buildings, but that wasn't that wasn't natural for me in the beginning either. I much prefer drawing um, characters, people, or, you know, it could be animals, uh, people, make-believe characters, doesn't really matter, but um, anything that's got a face is kind of what I tend to like drawing. And, you know, if I, obviously I'm in my studio now and that's kind of where I do all of my picture book work and um, middle grade chapter book, all that work goes on in the studio. But even if I want to draw outside of the studio, you know, I have lots of sketchbooks with me. Um, but even then, I'm always just drawing. I draw characters. Where are they? Yeah. So like, you know, it's all about the people, really. Um, uh -huh. I just love that. Yes. I love thinking about um, the like a pig you know that kind of thing <laughs> i just love drawing um characters um which actually segues us nicely doesn't it into it the drawing. Does. <laughs> that wasn't planned but that worked out quite well so everybody will need um some paper and um some pens pencils crayons whatever you've got um and when i'm drawing characters now i need to try and get this right so that you can see it i like to start with the eyes um and today i thought that we would draw the frog from the royal leapfrog seeing as he is our kind of winning competitor in that story so i would like you to draw two circles for the eyes like something i can't get this right <laughs> something like that i'll have sorted it by the time i finish and then i'm going to switch to the green pen and then you need to draw the top of our frog's head and a nice that, big smile there we go okay so top of his head and a nice big smile, seeing as it's the bank holiday, I'm hoping everybody's nice and happy. And then our frog actually, in the story, has a very fetching neck scarf. So I'm going to pop that on. Like so. So give your little frog a scarf of some sort. And I might add some spots to mine because that's the other thing you have to think of as an illustrator is patterns on everybody's clothes. And that's one of my favourite things to do. I've got lots of books on fashion and I refer to those a lot. So our frog now has a nice little scarf. And I'm also going to give him a hat. I'm going to make mine like a cowboy hat. And you can give him whatever kind of hat you like, but I'm going for a cowboy theme. 
chest. And then we come on to the arms. Now, my frog in the book ended up with very, very long arms and long fingers. So there's one arm. And then I'm going to add in another arm. Something like that. And then we'll add in the body. So we're working our way down our little frog. And I'm going to do him jumping. So I'm going to do and I've been trying to keep up. Oh, have you? <laughs> I wouldn't go too quickly. Obviously, no, no, no. If people, if people what, are watching what? on... Um, they can pause. Up, they can pause. <laughs> you don't have that luxury. You have to try and keep up with me, who's drawn that frog a, a million times, probably. Wow. Wow. probably have. Right, let's have a look, then. I, I don't oh, think my one. I need to see your... I need to see your... There's, there's my Frank the Frog. Oh, oh they're good. Oh, you're going to put me out of a job. <laughs> I, think, I think my, my, my exactly frog would fall saying, over on his legs. <laughs> I never said much they longer. To, they, know, they don't have to be balanced. They just have to look good. <laughs> I'm not very good at legs, I've decided. I've not got the idea that they should be the same length, Kirsty, really. But there we are. Not right. <laughs> brilliant. One thing I've brilliant. learned from, uh, from one thing I've learned from seeing Claire do this a couple of times now is uh, is always being careful to make sure that when I start, I start far enough up the page so that I've got enough room for the legs. Yes. It's very, <laughs> very easy to, to, uh, to um, have no, a legless frog. Or when that happens, and um, that's happened at a couple of events that I've done, and I just stick another bit of paper on the bottom, see? It's always ah. good to just put your bits of paper together. And then I sometimes end up doing that in sketchbooks if I run out of if I start too low down and then I don't have room for the feet or something, I'll just rip a bit of paper off from somewhere in the back and stick it on the bottom. Top tip. That's a really yeah. good tip. That's a really good tip because I think most of us would just give up at that point. They go, oh, no, I've done it all wrong. But yes, just no. put a bit of paper on. Simple Very solution. Yeah. Are, are, you yeah. a great, are you a great believer in that sort of 
that, that special tape. Oh, something just fell off. The, the leapfrog just hopped off. <laughs> it, was, it was held up by by uh, by blue tag. <laughs> <laughs> very very um, professional. Yes. <laughs> Now I can see what, what else is on the bookshelf now, if you look carefully. Yeah, um, uh -oh. um, <laughs> do you find, that, well, do you, do you have a, a particular tape that you don't mind sticking things together with, or do you always tape it at the back? Or do you have that uh, tape that you um, on? Yeah, sometimes um, masking tape will do it. Um, but if I'm sticking something into a sketchbook, I'd probably tape it on the reverse side so that you can't see it. Um, or sometimes yeah. I'll just use some good old fashioned glue and then yeah. that works as well. A bit of print. A print is all right, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Um, and I actually just noticed a question in yes. the chat. Yeah. I'll um, just bring it over from Chris. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. So, oh, do yeah, you both okay. have any tips for young or older artists who feel <clears throat> their hands are a bit shaky? That's a good question. Oh. Is it best to draw at an upright drawing board or on a flat surface? Oh, yeah, so you, yeah. I think I don't have a, a drawing board, a, you know, like um, an easel type thing that you can put on an angle, um, but I am actually considering getting one. Um, I think it's really useful to be able to rest your hand on something and especially the kind of like this part of your arm because it just does actually help to to steady your hand but actually what I kind of feel is that if your hands are a bit shaky maybe embrace that as part of the drawing actually um I've noticed that as I've got more confident my line work has become less precise and there's some amazing artists some of my absolute illustrative heroes have the shakiest of lines um you know quentin blake Ronald quentin Stern, blake, yeah. um, thinking, yeah. tony ross <laughs> you know all those kind of people their lines really aren't that precise um and so yes there's things that you could do to you know aid yourself such as the drawing board definitely drawing on a flat surface something hard um even just um a hard back book sometimes if i'm drawing out of the studio if i'm sat downstairs in front of the tv or something i'll just get like a big book it's normally a cookery book that i never use um and i just lean on that that's really useful um and also instead of drawing on um like single sheets of paper um maybe consider you know drawing on you know like a, a pad something that's got a bit of padding to it for want of a better word that can be really handy um but more than anything i'd say just kind of em embrace if your lines are shaky then maybe look at that as being something unique to you and the way that you draw um i'm kind of a big advocate of actually just meeting ourselves where we are and rather than trying to change the things about ourselves it, you know putting them into the drawing and into your own yeah. style of drawing i think that's a really good thing to do that would be yeah. that's that's a great tip actually and, and in a way it kind of applies to writing too because uh, uh one of the best tips i was given when i was starting to write was write what you want to write you know mm. if you if you like doing stories about cars then write stories about cars you know because it, it will certainly you, you'll you'll write better if you do something that comes more from you and the same with drawing like, you know you, you just play play to your own strengths there's no, I no think one's so. no one's stopping you you know mm -hmm. And it might even be worth, you know, um, looking at some of the artists that do have more shaky lines and then that actually inspires you and gives you a bit of confidence to just embrace however it is that you're drawing. Sometimes that can be useful as long as you don't start, you know, yeah. um, judging yourself against them, but that can be really inspiring. Well, that's true, yeah, that's true, yeah, yeah. I heard yeah. a really, a really lovely saying, which was, uh, "Be yourself. Everyone else is taken." I think yes, that's a, exactly. that's, a, that's a fun. Very good one. That's a nice one, actually. I might mm. write that down. I'm write that <laughs> I like that one. Uh, and yeah. Chris also got gave us lot, gave us lots of froggy love there. Oh, well. good. Thank um, you. We like the froggy love. Oh, um, <laughs> um, and she's just come back to say, "Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant." Thank yeah, you. you're welcome. Cool. Um, um, sorry. Yeah. Any more questions? 
So um, I'm going to fill in while people might be having a little think. Um, so um, I was going to ask uh, Peter about adapting a story that already exists and then adapting it and having a rhyme at the end of each line as well. <laughs> Where do you start with that? Where did you start with the original? Do you start with, uh, I can't even begin to imagine trying to recreate it again, because mm -hmm. the language, obviously, because it was a long time ago that he wrote it, is, yeah. you know, having to well, update I mean, it as well. Uh, I have the advantage in that, I mean, he, he obviously, he wrote in Danish and I'm working from translation. So there is, <laughs> I don't have to, I don't have to start with the Danish. Although I suppose in, if, if, if it, you know, if I really wasn't sure about something, I would, uh, I might look at the original Danish and get someone to translate it for me. Um, but I, I basically start with uh, reading the story. Um, the case of the Royal Leapfrog, it's actually not a very well known Anderson story. It's called The Jumping Match or the leapfrog, um, the various translations of it. And it's quite short. And this, the plot is pretty much what I've kept it as. Um, I've filled in details and, you know, the setting is different. And and, uh, and I, as you say, I've made it rhyme, but uh, I've got the plot. Um, and actually that's often, you know, the three, three elements to writing a story. One is one is what the story, the beginning, middle and end element. And then just uh, thinking of the words and then thinking of the rhymes and then making it all uh, work nicely and making it all work in a way that um, you know I, you, you might not realize that a typical picture book is is uh, divided into 12 spreads that's a spread is two two facing pages as a spread and there are 12 of those in almost every picture book so when I write a story I have to I, I think of it in terms of 12 essentially 12 images um, uh, so I write the story in twelve sections uh, and think about what would be visually interesting on that on each section potentially. I mean, I mean, I leave most of it to the illustrator, but I have to think visually: is that is that interesting enough to, to be illustrated? Um, and then the rhymes. Well, I just um, they just come as come as they come. Really, I uh, if I if I if I'm stuck for a rhyme, I will write a list of words. I'll start at the alpha, at, the, at A. Like say like the word um, uh, C, for example, S W E. Uh, it's quite an easy one to rhyme. But if I if I was stuck for a rhyme, I'd start with A. Any words with A that rhyme with C, um, then I go with B. A B. The the word B rhymes with C, and so on and so on, all the way down. And then then sometimes I'll I'll come across rhymes I wouldn't have thought of and words I wouldn't have thought of, uh, and that might even take me down another. Uh, give me an idea for another bit of the story. Um, so it's it's uh, in terms of adapting. Um, in some ways, it's straightforward because I've already got the plot there. Uh, in other ways, it's tricky because there might be some bits of the plot that no longer work for us today. Let's say. Mm. Um, I mean, that a, a case in point is the the next book we're working on, which is still a state secret, um, a very famous Anderson story. Um, and there are others as well. Uh, that, for example, I, I, I'd thought about doing The Ugly Duckling um, and because it's a very famous story, everyone knows it. But it's taken me, I still haven't quite got my head around how to do that in a way that isn't unkind to the duckling. Mm. Um, because I mean, there there might be a way of doing it, and it and the, the one thing about these stories that we're doing is that we're not necessarily following the exact plot. We are kind of bringing them up to date a bit as well, and making them. I mean, they're they're fun. They're not all, Anderson stories are often can can be a bit serious sometimes. They're very beautiful, but they can be serious and even sad. But we wanted to do fun ones. Um, and some of them, you just think, oh, yes, I remember that as a child, that story. But reading it now, actually, it's it's a little bit, I'm not sure about that, you know, yeah. it's a bit, a bit unpleasant, maybe. It might not have been then, but it might be now. So there's that to think about as well. I mean, I did an ad adaptation of Chitty Chitty Bang Bang quite recently, and everyone said to me, oh, has he got the child catcher in it? I don't think I'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> and I say, well, no, well, well, Chitty Chitty, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang doesn't, the original book doesn't have the child catch in it. Mm. What it does have in it is some armed robbers who climb into a child's bedroom at night and steal two children when they're asleep. So, of course, I thought, well, that can't be in it either. So I've, I've rewritten that bit entirely. 
So these are all things you have to consider. You have to think about mm. wh whether something is still still works for, for now, and it's not going to be too scary to read at night. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. And is it is it fun? And you know, is it um, is it uh, is it well paced? Essentially, or I've got a good beginning, middle, and end, and nice material, so an illustrator doesn't get bored. Yes, <laughs> I know. And especially because, you know, books that um, take place in the same setting, they're really difficult to do, actually. I've had, it, it, because you, you're trying to think of different ways to show the same place, That's like, that can be really, really difficult. Um, yeah. You sort of run out of ideas. So, you know, the, the great things about these books is that every spread is kind of, moving through different locations or parts of the house or palace whatever and that's really fun for me because obviously you can make each room feel totally different to the one before it um but it's a real challenge if if they don't move on from the place you know if it's all set in the same room or something that's really difficult hmm. Hmm. yeah that's that's quite that must be quite tricky actually yeah. Mm. yeah so do you so in terms of um working with an illustrator i mean is are there top tips so we um we use lal as a way of encouraging well, adults adult writers as well and children who are looking to kind of start their writing journey or maybe their illustrating journey so maybe they've got a friend that they want to start creating a book now we know that a picture book now has 12 spreads so that's really useful are there any of the top tips about how to work really really well with an illustrator and, and a writer writing together that would be helpful um well i suppose one thing I would say is that uh, people sometimes do ask me that, like I, um, I, I, I've got, I've written a picture book, but I haven't got anyone to illustrate it. Uh, but actually, mm -hmm. that is a thing that publishers do. Um, publishers will generally prefer to have just the text, and then they know dozens and dozens of illustrators, and new illustrators start coming out of art colleges every year. You know, um, they will literally know. I mean, sometimes several hundred illustrators, and they're very good at matching a story with an illustrator. Mm -hmm. um, as, a, as a little state secret is that the, Claire wasn't the first illustrator commissioned for these two stories. Um, let's just say it didn't work out, uh, <laughs> and then, we, we, and, and finally, we found the perfect illustrator. Um, which is, you know, so absolutely brilliant. But so if you do want to do a picture book, you, you don't really need to th worry about the illustrations mm. <clears throat> to start with. Mm. Uh, I would say, um, as you've, as I've said, uh, when you write the actual text, present it in a way that a publisher or a, an agent, or I mean, I sent mine to publishers uh, originally. Um, you can do it either way will have an, ha, be able to visualize how it works in 12 spreads. Um, I, I do sometimes mentor people and they'll send me their stories which they've written and it will be like 700 words of just text, rhymed or otherwise. And you don't know where the illustrations are going to fall. It doesn't, it's quite, you could work it out, but it makes it laborious, it makes it hard work for the editor. So make it, make things as easy as, uh, as you can for the person who's going to read your book and your story and assess it. Um, and yeah, so that's that, that, that's my first tip is just how you present it really. Um, mm -hmm. Just present it in 12 spreads or I mean 12 to 14. I, mean, I wouldn't say more than that. And probably n maximum 700 words, I would say. Do you think, Claire? I think. I would have thought so. Yeah, that's, that's, that's quite a, that's quite heavy at uh, seven hundred for mm -hmm. for verse for rhyme anyway. Uh, and you also have to think the more the more words on a page means the less illustrations. So that's a balance as well because obviously yeah you know that's, yeah, that's something that Peter and I and obviously our team at Bloomsbury work on sometimes. How do we get the text to fit? with the illustration just in terms of a, a spatial <laughs> problem that needs solving because sometimes yeah. I'll want to do something and we need all of the words but how can I fit my vision for what I think would work best as an illustration how can I get that to fit around the words in the space so you know that's why sometimes if you do too many words well you're going to end up not having enough of the illustration so you have to think yeah. about that don't you i assume yeah, yeah. I mean, about whether the words every single word needs to be 
needed and necessary. Otherwise, you're taking up valuable illustrating space. Well, you know. <laughs> Well, actually, it is. It is generally a, a part of the process. I mean, it's, it's a part of every editorial process. Is that I will be asked, "Can you turn those eight lines into four lines?" And uh, that's just quite a regular part of the part of the process. Um, mm. Because uh, you know, um, I'll, my text goes in, and then you know, it, uh, Claire will start to work on it, and she'll do rough sketches, and then we'll, we'll look at the rough sketches, and she'll come up with some brilliant idea for a spread. Um, which be which is absolutely fantastic, except for the fact that all the all the text is all ten lines of text are squashed into one corner. So I'd be um, we'll have this discussion and we'll agree that that the picture is fabulous. So I'll, I'll condense the text down even more. Mm. Um, Tony Ross was asked how how uh, long are your picture book text, and he said as short as I can get away with. Yeah, <laughs> and that is really the answer, really. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it's very difficult to do, I think, to, you know, I, I often have people say, oh, it must be really easy to write a picture book. And obviously I, I'm on the illustrative side, but I also understand the, the process, you know, that... You're, you're not my mum, are you, by any chance? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and when I just think start, that's really nice difficult. Book. When are you going to start writing grown-up books? Oh. It's so <laughs> difficult to, to, you know, say exactly yeah. just what needs to be said and nothing more. It's a really, really difficult thing. Mm -hmm. um, and from an yeah, illustrative yeah. point of view, I think if it's, um, you know, if, if getting into illustrating books is something that you're wanting to do, my top tip actually would be something that took me by surprise in the beginning is that how difficult it is to take one character and um, have that character do different things across 12 to 14 spreads because sometimes when you're starting to draw you tend to just do one drawing of you know one character in a situation so it might be um, a bear in a wood eating some berries for example um, but then when you come to do a a picture book about a bear that lives in a wood that likes to eat berries you suddenly realize that you have to draw that bear from lots of different angles doing lots of different things and with lots of different facial expressions um and that really caught me by surprise the first couple of books that i did i thought oh <laughs> i need to learn how to do this um and so i suppose my top tip would be if you have a character that you've drawn and you like, maybe try drawing that character doing different things. So walking, sitting down, eating, you know, think of all the things, as we were talking about earlier, that that character might do in the world that they live in and start to draw it, practice drawing it. Um, because, yeah, that's that's obviously something that you have to do, whether whatever kind of book you're working on, whether it's a, you know, a picture book, even uh, even if it's a non-fiction book, you know, um, or a chapter book or a middle grade mm -hmm. book, the, the, the chances are that you're going to have repetitive characters that you're going to have to revisit, you know, several times throughout the book. So, um, yeah, that would kind of be mm -hmm. my top tip if you're wanting to get into illustrating books is to move your drawings from just a singular drawing into you know something more than that um yeah, yeah. That's, a good, that, that's a good tip actually because it is quite hard isn't it you draw a face and then you think oh what would that face look sideways How did yeah and then what would that face look sideways and confused or what would that face look like from the other side and looking happy and oh well what would they look like if they were sitting down you know like suddenly you you come up against all of these yeah things. exactly yeah they yeah, really yeah, yeah interesting point really interesting yeah. point and something that's uh, good to do is and everybody kind of shies away from it because uh, I think life drawing has got this connotation that you need to be, you know, in an art school um, or in a circle with a naked person in front of you drawing them. And it doesn't, you know, you can be on a train, you can be sat in a cafe, um, you can do it if you've got a house that has a window that faces onto a street you can watch the people go by and just record those in on a bit of paper in a sketchbook and you learn a lot by doing that because yeah. you you're um developing and honing your kind of observational skills and i think 
when I started to do more of that, my drawing really improved um, just because it's observation, you know. And then when you're sitting down to do a picture book and I'm thinking, oh, well, how would a king standing in front of a mirror trying on an outfit, how would that look? It, you've got a bit more reference to how the human body works. So that's also a good thing to try and do. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. We love top tips. Thank you very, very much, both very, of you. Good, good tips there, great. And I think yeah. that was a really good segue into the the, the last book. The piece oh, going to read for us. There. It was really good. It was really good. I thought yeah. oh, that was good. I, this, could be, this could be a side job of mine, couldn't it? Just writing segues for people. <laughs> Over to you. It was so <laughs> neat. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. Was Peter just frozen for a second? Ooh. Oh, Peter's frozen. Oh, we're back. Oh, we're, we're, back. back. we're back. We're back. We're back. We can. Yep. We're good. Yes. We're good. We're good. Is he? Okay. No? Oh, yes. He's there. Yeah. Brilliant. So, uh, okay. are we good? I'll get the, the right. screen up ready for our um, our last story. Wonderful. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, our second book today, which is called The King's Birthday Suit. And this is based on, uh, well, inspired by an Anderson story that I'm sure you might have heard of called The Emperor's New Clothes. Uh, and, and Claire said that she likes drawing clothes and fashion. And I think she sort of <laughs> virtually went to uh, Milan and Bologna to uh, research this. Oh, I wish I had um, before. Okay. So... <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so if everyone is still sitting comfortably, um, then I shall begin. The King's Birthday Suit. King Albert Horatio Otto III had so many clothes, it was simply absurd. He had outfits for yoga and stroking his cat. He never ate cheese without changing his hat. For every event, he would wear something new. He even changed outfits to go to the loo. It, it'll soon be my birthday, the king said one day. There'll be royalty coming from far, far away. I'll need a new suit, the best there can be. Who will design a new outfit for me? Fashion designers turned up in their droves, bringing the king all their latest new clothes. But nothing his majesty tried was quite right. This cloth is too scratchy and simply too bright. This jacket's not comfy, it just doesn't fit. Too spotty, I look a right twit. Ooh, have we lost you, Peter, again? Oh no, where's Peter gone? The king said, that's just what I need. I'll make sure you're paid very highly indeed. Then Mitch and McTavish pretended to weave the fabulous fabric from morning. Click, nobody guessed. It was all a big trick. Oh, I think we're having Wi-Fi problems here, people. Oh dear, we've lost oh. we've we've lost Peter altogether. We've, we've lost, lost Peter altogether. altogether. Oh no! I think his Wi-Fi has just gone down. Oh, um, dear. Well, let's well, come back in. It if you want, I have that, a copy. Have you got a copy there? Brilliant. Look at okay. me jumping Wonderful. in. Wonderful. <laughs> Wonderful. No, we gonna... don't have the presentation, do we? Or do we? No, no, it's 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 disappeared as well. I think his Wi-Fi has just collapsed. Bless his heart. So I'm gonna clear. I'm gonna put it up on you so that we can see the the picture nice and thick. Okay. That's fine. I'll just. Oh, he's coming back in. Oh, he's coming back in. But we'll let him get set back up. Uh... We're here. I don't Hello. Know what, what we lost happened, you there for a minute. We lost you. <laughs> I was about to jump in. Uh, <laughs> Claire had the book ready to go. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. Okay. All right. Um, I would me... pick up if I was you. Pick up from um, that page. The because yeah. we lost uh, us 
we lost you. Okay. Oh, really? From the um. Okay. Yeah, yeah. from along came two rascals, McTavish and Mitch. You were. I was yeah. talking to no one then, was I? Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we're sure it was great. We're sure it's great. <laughs> but we lost okay. you. Cool. Okay. So you've you've had that bit. Yes. Okay. There you go. Start from there. Okay. That's it. Along came two rascals, McTavish and Mitch, who'd cooked up a story to make themselves rich. We'll make you a suit of the finest cloth ever, which can only be seen by the wise and the clever. The king said, fantastic, that's just what I need. I'll make sure you're paid very highly indeed. Then Mitch and McTavish pretended to weave the fabulous fabric from morning till eve clackety clickety clickety clack working their weaving loom forward and back clickety clackety clackety click nobody guessed it was all a big trick a day or two later while changing for tea the king had a thought with a chuckle of glee <laughs> my ministers think they're a pretty smart lot we'll find out who's clever like me and who's not he ordered his ministers, please go and see my amazing new cloth and describe it to me. But the ministers entered the room in dismay. They couldn't see anything. What would they say? They said to the king, that cloth, sir, oh my, we've seen nothing like it, which wasn't a lie. We just can't describe it, they said which was true it's quite unbelievable that was true too so off went the could he see oh, i think we've had another yeah. Tavish each took out a tape to measure the king his clothes. What a jape. Next, they pretended to cut out the suit. Snip. went there says snips snip pretending to stitch your suit said mctavish will fit like a dream we'll just try and get hold of peter guys i think he's um his wi-fi is um Oh, it was doing so well. I know. His Wi-Fi has just fallen out, I think, I think, with us. I think everyone's online for the Queen's Jubilee and they're all searching things online. And uh, Probably. We've had, a, we've had a bit of an overload this end. Um, okay. Have we lost Peter altogether now? So I can still move the picture. I can. I think I've still got the presentation, Claire. Have you got the book and can read the words until Peter comes yeah, back on? Yeah, we we're on, on the balloon page, aren't we? So I'm just yeah. going to pick up from there. Okay. So off went the king, just as pleased as can be. And he had a great shock. Not a thing could he see. But he said, why, this cloth is amazing, dear fellows. It's as light as a feather. Hang on a minute. And I love all those yellows. Here we go. So Thank you. Perfect. then Mitch and McTavish each took out a tape to measure the king for his clothes. What a jape. Next, they pretended to cut out the suit. Snip went their scissors. Snip, snip. What a hoot. At last with their needles, McTavish and Mitch sat on the table pretending to stitch. Your suit, said McTavish, will fit like a dream. You'll look quite astounding, said Mitch. What a scream. Next day as the band played a birthday salute, the king went to try on his fabulous suit. 
Mitch said, oh my, what a marvelous fit. The trousers are perfect. They don't pinch a bit. McTavish said, sir, you're fantastically dressed. All of your guests will be mighty impressed. At the party that evening, the guests gave a cheer when the butler announced his majesty's here. They had all heard the tale of the wonderful clothes and they strained for a glimpse on the tips of their toes. And there goes the king there, you see. His majesty haughtily strode into wow. sight. Oh, the king made a mighty impression, all right. A duchess who just couldn't stop herself staring declared what a splendid new outfit he's wearing. And all of the guests were quick to agree. So no one would think they were stupid, you see. But one little girl stepped out of the crowd, pointed her finger and hollered out loud. You grown-ups are silly. Can't you all see? The king is stark naked. He's as bare as can be. <laughs> she started to giggle. The others did too. And the king turned bright red, for he knew it was true. He turned and marched off the same way he had come. As everyone laughed at the royal bear bum. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a lot of fun to illustrate. I can tell you. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm not sure that we've actually, I think Peter's still, he's, he's kind of back, but he's frozen. Bless his heart. I think he's having Wi Fi problems. Frozen. Oh dear. We'll leave him there. We'll leave him there with us just in case he comes back <laughs> yeah. in. Oh, Thank you for wow. stepping in there. It's such a funny story. What I'll say to everyone is, um, it's a bit popped off again. What I'll say to everyone is, it's a brilliant book, The King's Thank Birthday you, Suit. Kirsty. Absolutely brilliant. So get yourselves down to the library when it's open or to a bookshop and go and find this one because you're going to absolutely love the story. It's really funny. Uh, and the illustrations are, like they were saying earlier, there's so, so, so much to see in the background. You can keep, I keep thinking I'd love to share this with a group of a school, a school class because I think they'd be absolutely brilliant the amount of time you could spend looking at the pictures together. And yeah, that, I have had some parents telling me that they're, kids love looking at all the different clothes and expressions especially in the last couple of pages which is always lovely to hear uh, the cat was the one that i liked the cat with the matching uh, yeah. outfit to the king i'll just give you a hot tip outfit. there watch out for the cats the cat's clothes because it's yeah very, the long suffering cat yes <laughs> brilliant 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 and um, i realized i realized earlier we started and we were talking about hands here and we yes. asked a question um as how old people thought hands might be and we never gave the answer so oh, no, i feel didn't. that i should tell everybody that he would be about 200 hello years old. oh hello you're back. I'm, <laughs> back I'm somewhere else you're somewhere else you're, what, you're on the move i don't you're know what happened to there, Queen's party. <laughs> oh well thank you for reading it claire i just see you briefly finishing it off so that's gosh, okay yeah i don't know what happened there i mean i i was I tried something else out. So it didn't seem to be the Wi-Fi. I don't know quite what it was. Um, oh yes. um, it, uh, Claire did a great it, job. We, we ended up with that wonderful yeah. last picture of the, the bear bomb. Yeah, well, it always uh, goes down well, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh. and Claire was just telling us how old um, Hans Christian Hans. Anderson was. So 200. Was 200, yeah. to say earlier that he would be about 200 years old. Give so, or take, yeah. Give or yeah, take a bit, yeah. These stories are really old. In fact, I think I think this year is two hundred years since his very first story was published. So he was ah, about okay. he was a teenager. So he was about yeah. two hundred and a bit. So two hundred yeah. goodness so, me, and that they're still wow. going strong is extraordinary. It's extraordinary. Yeah, there's, there's, extraordinary. Uh, they're, they're full of they're full of great things. Brilliant, yeah. brilliant. Okay, Both so I think that unfortunately is the end of our hour. We're just on we're just on twelve o'clock. So unless oh, wow. anything else. Uh, Claire and Peter that you wanted to share or, or um, tell anybody um, we'll finish up unless I don't think I've had any more questions to come in so if there's anything else that you'd like to say while you're here if not we'll finish up uh, well just to say thank you thank you for listening I'm sorry I disappeared at the end there but uh, oh. um, and yeah happy 
happy happy reading and happy writing yeah and, and happy enjoy the rest drawing of the weekend. me yeah brilliant um, thank you very much for having me i've enjoyed it brilliant so i'll just keep you there i'll just finish off hopefully the wi-fi will just finish off and we'll say goodbye so we, i think we've, we can all agree we've had a wonderful hour and i'm going to be sharing this like i say with um lots of schools because i know there's lots of schools who are going to enjoy trying out claire's um drawing and trying the kind of how to illustrate how creating a picture book idea which i think is a really good one to because it's, it's a real talent and there's some fantastic children's books out there two of which oh, this one's moved uh are these ones as well so thank you peter and claire it's been great we've had a wonderful time it's been really fun um, if you want to find out more about Peter and Claire, you can also do a bit of research yourselves. You can go on to their websites. So for Peter, it's uh, www.peterbentley.com. You could go and see the huge number of books that he's written. It's not just these two, there's a huge number. And you can go and start to make a little shopping list or a little reading list that you can bring into the library next time you come. Uh, and if you want to have a look at Claire's website, it's www.claire hash or well, line powell.com um and again you can see some of the other books that claire's illustrated which are which are absolutely beautiful really worth a look so make sure you go and check those out um okay so um our next library adventures live oh we lost peter again is on the 7th of june at 11 o'clock with Anne marie anang who's going to be introducing you to her fantastic picture book i am nefertiti there's going to be music. I saw Ooh. a little guitar. I saw a little guitar um, and um, storytelling. So please do join us for that one. If you can't make it, remember that you can always go to our Kirkley's Library's website or our YouTube channel and you can catch up on all the LALs that you might have missed, um, including this one, which will be there as well. So there we are. If you go to kirkleyslibraries.co.uk forward slash LAL, you'll be able to catch up on everything. Um, so what else have I got to tell you? I think that's it. Oh, there's a comment coming. I'll have a look at that in a second. Um, so um, enjoy the rest of your, oh, there we are. There's just a nice little, uh, no, little comment you. from Christina. Oh, thank you, Christina. Thank yes. you. Um, so everybody, enjoy the rest of the bank holiday thank celebrations. You. And just remember to watch out for very jumpy fleas yep. and tricksters who want to sell you a new suit. Just make sure you can see it. <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Thank Peter you. and Claire. Take care, everyone. I'm going to finish Bye. now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.